Hello, and a very warm welcome to LNT Royal YouTube channel. In a new conversation, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have acknowledged the uncomfortable history of the Commonwealth. Well, and I think so much of what we're seeing as well is that, you know, it's not even in the big moments, right? It's in the quiet moments where racism and unconscious bias lies and as you've said lies and hides and thrives and it's those nuances that i think is what makes it confusing for a lot of people to understand the role that they play in that either passively or actively but i think even more so passively and so much of what i've come to the understanding of especially in learning even more about it of late and obviously having had personal experience with it as well but in people's complacency they're complicit yeah. And that, I think, is the shift that we're seeing, to go, it's not enough to just be a bystander and saying, well, it wasn't me. And that's what I think was very much manifested in, in what you're feeling from people's outpouring surrounding the murder of George Floyd. That if it wasn't that this wasn't always happening, it's that it's come to a head at a time where people just said, enough. And I'm curious to know from all of you how you're seeing the effects of Black Lives Matter in, I mean, obviously, Mike, you're in Manchester, you said, but around the world where the rest of you are, how you're seeing that play out and, and percolate there. And they most likely will have the best and most informed diagnosis of the problem. Um, and, and that will in itself lend to a more complete and, let's say, comprehensive solution. What I'm hearing from that is know when to lead and know when to listen. Yes. And yes. those are probably the two key things in this moment that I think people, that distinction of knowing when like, you need to be on the right side of this, as we all do, but you also need to know that in being on the right side of it, sometimes just involves listening and having an understanding of what's at play. Certainly when you look across the Commonwealth, there's no way that we can move forward unless we acknowledge the past. And I think so many people have, have done such an amazing, incredible job of acknowledging the past and trying to right those wrongs. But I think we all acknowledge on here that there is so much more still to do. It's not going to be easy, and in some cases it's not going to be comfortable. But it needs to be done, because guess what? Everybody benefits. So I think there's a hell of a lot that we together need to acknowledge. But I only see, I only see hope and optimism in the fact that we, we could only do this together. We have to, in this moment in time, say, we're going to have to be a little uncomfortable right now mm. because it's only in pushing through that discomfort that we get to the other side of this and find the place, as you're pointing out, where a high tide raises all ships. Mm. Equality does not put anyone on the back foot. It puts us all on the same footing, which is a fundamental human right. And that's what we're talking about here. The world is craving a healing through everything that's happened over these several months. And we really look back at history for obviously much longer than that. And I think Alicia, to your point earlier, saying talking about discomfort and why it's an important recognition is that it's like growing pains. <laughs> growing pains are painful. This process is painful and it has been for a long time. But through that immense pain, what we can have tremendous faith in is knowing that there will be growth. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing happen every single day as all of you are out there campaigning, fighting the right fight, being on the right side of history and ensuring that we can get closer to seeing this truly as our past and not something that we have to revisit again and again and again. So we really, we thank you and commend you for your efforts on that. It is inspiring for both of us to, to watch and to bear witness to and why we, of course, made the time and find it a huge honor to be able to have this time with all of you today. Guys, I'm, I'm, I'm aging, right? I'm 35 already and- That's not aging. It is aging compared to these guys, look. Um, but the, the optimism and the hope that we get is listening and speaking to people like you because there is no turning back now, right? Everything is coming to a head. Things, solutions exist and, and change is happening far quicker than it ever has done before. But you know, back to your, your, all your points is we have to acknowledge but also learn from the past where people have tried to do something similar and failed for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. How are we going to be successful this time? Because all the clues are there. We just need this movement to be able to continue this momentum for as long as it takes. Um, and you guys are all, all leading that. Mike, sorry, you you're, you're, you were next and I jumped in. Right there with you, standing in solidarity and certainly doing everything that we can from our end. Um, we're gonna get there. And we have a lot of renewed faith and energy in that having had this conversation, so well done. Yeah, well done guys, just a huge thank you to everything that you're doing, the voice that you have, and hopefully the QCT platform is is making life easier for you guys and connecting you with so many people around the world that are yes. fighting the same fight. So yeah, this is um, this change is needed and it's coming. Thank you all so much. Take Thanks, good guys. care. As Black Lives Matter movement continues to grow, the Queen's Commonwealth Trust 
Chizuchi, of which Harry is president and Meghan, VP, has been hosting weekly conversations about the injustices facing young people today. And on July 1st, the Sussexes joined in on a video call to discuss the fight for equal rights with a group of young widows, a conversation the Duchess described as both energizing and inspiring. Over the course of the roughly 20-minute call with Chrisanne Jarrett, the QZET trustee and the co-founder and co-CEO of We Belong, Alicia Wallace, the director of Equality Bahamas, Mike Ermini, the founder and CEO of the Common Sense Network, and Abdullahi Alim, who leads the World Economic Forum's Global Shapers Network, Harry and Meghan reflected on institutional racism. Harry said, when it comes to institutional and systemic racism, it's there and it stays there because someone somewhere is benefiting from it. We can't deny or ignore the fact that all of us have been educated to see the world differently. However, once you start to realize that there is that bias there, then you need to acknowledge it. You need to do the work to become more aware. Megan, too, reflected on the role unconscious bias plays in racism and spoke of her personal experience with it. She said, it's not just in the big moments, it's in the quiet moments where racism and unconscious bias lies and thrives. It makes it confusing for a lot of people to understand the role that they play in that, either possibly and actively. But perhaps the most striking part of the conversation was when the royals reflected on the Commonwealth itself. Harry said, When you look across the Commonwealth, there is no way that we can move forward unless we acknowledge the past. So many people have done such an amazing, incredible job of acknowledging the past and trying to right those wrongs, but I think we all acknowledge on there, there is so much more still to do. It's not going to be easy and in some cases it's not going to be comfortable, but it needs to be done, because guess what, everybody benefits. I think there's a hell of a lot that we together need to acknowledge, but I only see hope and optimism in the fact that we can only do this together. But it was here that Megan acknowledged that. We're going to have to be a little uncomfortable right now, speaking, it seems about the global community at large, but also, possibly the royal family. She said, It's only in pushing through that discomfort that we get to the other side of this and find the place where a high tide raises all ships. Equality does not put anyone on the back foot, it puts us all on the same footing, which is a fundamental human right, and that's what we're talking about here. Another analysis. Meghan Markle is still the most charismatic member of the royal family. For the most part, the British royal family is a well-respected institution. Queen Elizabeth II has been revered for being a steady force for the UK and the Commonwealth for over 70 years. Though the family has had its share of scandals, they've always been able to recover. Despite all of this, because the family is so stiff in tradition, they are often perceived as uptight and stuffy. The royals have made certain changes over the decades. However, critics believe that they are out of touch with reality and stuck in the past. When Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, married into the firm in 2018, she brought a modern spot to the royal family. Unfortunately, all of her ideas weren't welcomed and she and Prince Harry eventually resigned from their roles. Though she is no longer a senior working royal, the Duchess is still the most charismatic royal family member. Meghan Markle has brilliant ideas. A lot has been said about Meghan and why she was never embraced by the British press or public. However, there are certain traits that everyone seems to agree that she processes. Meghan's brilliance and work ethic are unmatched, so much so that the royal family was often taken aback. A royal aide revealed in a new book, Royals at War, the untold story of Harry and Meghan's shocking split with the House of Windsor. All of their IQs put together would not equal hers. Unfortunately, the Duchess, wealth of knowledge and brilliant ideas went always embraced by the royal family, especially when they clashed with tradition. Lady Colin Campbell told The Independent, Meghan is much better educated and more academic. Meghan is almost disturbingly self-confident. We must hope she realizes that her vision is not the only vision. The royal family didn't know what to do with the Markle Spockle. When Meghan and Prince Harry's romance went public, no one could have anticipated the frenzy surrounding the self made American actor. She was magnetic, interesting, and she effortlessly outshone everyone in the royal family. 
the Royals was unprepared for the Mark or Spockle, Chenoz reports. While Kate's support of her husband over the years has been admirable, it's immediately clear how this model wouldn't work for Meghan and Prince Harry. For one, Meghan came into the relationship with celebrity of her own and a global fan base. Whether or not her intention had been to outshine Harry, the public was inevitably more interested in her actions than Harry's at various turns. A reaction that likely ill, received by the royal family. Meghan Markle is still the most charismatic member of the royal family. Though she is no longer a senior working royal, Meghan's charisma can still be felt globally. Royal expert Leslie Carroll told Express, Meghan has the warmth and accessibility that Diana had, which are some of the qualities that Harry fell in love with when he met her. In fact, Meghan's makeup artist, Daniel Mottin, believes that her ability to make strangers feel like a close friend is what the royals needed. He told Entertainment Tonight, I feel like what she represents is now. She is contemporary and people felt she resonates on so many levels because here is someone we all know. We all have a friend that looks like her, who is marrying into this establishment, which is very one way, one perspective. Please support Growing LMT Royal Channel by subscribe channel. Like and share videos are. Your support is the motivation for our to produce better videos. Don't stop. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more LMT Royal videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.